Hello! Welcome back to Let's Play Escape from Monkey Island. I think this is episode 10 or 11. So far this has been the longest game of the series. But there isn't much longer to go in this part. This should be the last video. So I made a mistake of giving both of the parrots the... the grog. So now I need to sober one of them up. What's my name? Ah, Davy Jones. That must have been the lying parrot. There we go. Is Tiny Lafitte's hat buried under this rock? Ah, yes. Hmm. I know that parrot always lies, so Tiny Lafitte's hat must not be here. Here we go. I can see this might take a while, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue onwards and I'll jump cut to the right location when I, when I get there. Which way should I go to find Tiny's hat? North. Which way should I go to find Tiny's hat? East. Is Tiny Lafitte's hat buried under this rock? Heck yes. Hmm, I know that that parrot always tells the truth, so Tiny Lafitte's hat must be buried under this rock. I guess the parrot's lost interest. Here we go. That took about five minutes to do. Not too bad. I'm not even remotely mighty enough to pick that up. There's got to be a better way to get under there. Right. I'm pretty sure we need a dunce cap. Wait a minute. No, we don't. Hi there, little Guybrush. Hi there, big Guybrush. Hi there, little Lechuck. Arr, ahoy there, big Guybrush. What's on your mind, little Guybrush? I think Admiral Kasaba's a big dope, don't you? Well, I don't know, little Guybrush. What do you think, little Lechuck? I think little Guybrush is a preening pirate wannabe. Oh, yeah? Yeah! Now, boys. A moral lout. Defeat doily sniffer. Unemployed layabout. Guys. Pirate poser. Uncultured corpse. Girly man. Uh, I really think that's loud enough to catch Kasaba's attention. Jerk! Idiot! Nimrod! Dork! Uh, I've obviously got some deep-seated issues to work out here. Moron! Spaz! Jerk! Idiot! Nimrod! Dork! Why, those, those ignorant, anarchist savages! How dare they plot against my benevolent tyranny! Simkins, wheel out the really big cannon! Do we have to, sir? Our ears are still ringing from the last time. I've had just about enough of your pusillanimous insubordination, Simkins! Now roll out the really big cannon and blow up those terrorists this instant! And we've lost the puppets. Poor little Lechuk. So, now we need to return to Jambalai Island. Like so. So there's one place we haven't visited yet, which is this tall rock. What's that? Whoa, nice dive. Thank you, my friend. 
I fear that my skills have atrophied as of late, though. I'm not half the diver I used to be. That was one of the best plank dives I've ever seen. And who are you that would take such pains to flatter an aging plank diver? I'm Guybrush Threepwood, plank diver. Welcome to Jambalaya Island, Mr. Threepwood. I am Marco De Pollo, undefeated and undisputed plank diving champion of the world. Are you really the greatest diver in the world? Yes. I have spent years searching the planet for someone who could better me in the art of the plank dive, but to no avail. How sad. What are you doing on Jambalaya Island? Ah, that is an interesting story. Is it a short story? About a year ago, I despaired of ever finding my diving equal. I was prepared to hang up my trunks forever. Ugh. At this crucial moment, Senior Ozzy Mandrill approached me with an intriguing proposition. Am I old enough to hear this? He told me that he was building the tallest artificial plank diving platform in the world. And that he was willing to pay obscene amounts of money to have the world's greatest plank diver compete on it on a daily basis. Since I was ready to retire in any event, I figured why not retire in the comfort of a luxury resort island? Makes sense to me. Besides, there's always the chance that someone will come along who can finally challenge my skills. Has your arrangement with Ozymandro proven challenging? Sadly, no. But at least I'm receiving a steady stream of income. I'm looking for the pieces of the ultimate insult. What would I know of such things? One of the pieces is a bronze hat. I never wear hats. They might screw up the shape of my naturally streamlined head. One of the pieces is a silver monkey head. I'm sorry, but that doesn't ring a bell. One of the pieces is a golden man of some sort. Hmm. How peculiar. This solid gold all-world diving trophy looks like a golden man of some sort. It's over by the judge's table. Perhaps you're not the best person to ask about the ultimate insult. Perhaps not. How did you get into plank diving anyway? Ah, that is a story rife with melancholy. Are you sure you wish to hear it? Are you kidding? I love stories rife with melancholy. Very well. It begins with my father, Count Francisco Alvarez de Pollo. He was a man of peculiar moods and eccentricities. In one of his so-called lighter moments, he named his only son Marco much to the consternation of his wife and extended family. Why the fuss? I take it you have never been in a public swimming pool. Pirates don't have much use for them. Ah, then allow me to elaborate. At the tender age of six, I was sent to my first swimming lesson. Oh, how I happily splashed about, taking to the water like a worm to dirt. Suddenly, someone shouted my name. Marco! I turned to see who it was. Before I could find who had called my name, Everyone in the pool shouted in response, Poyo! I couldn't understand what was happening. Why were they shouting my name in such an annoying sing song manner? Why were they closing their eyes to my obvious torment? I, I tried to get them to stop, but they just kept chanting my name over and over again. Marco! Poyo! Unable to tolerate it any further, I climbed to the highest diving board in the pool and cannonballed into the center of the taunting masses as I hit the water with a resounding splash. The haunting chants of my classmates finally gave way to comforting screams of terror. What a horrible story. Yes, but at least I gained a lucrative career out of my childhood trauma. Do you still dive to drown out the voices of the taunting children? Oh no. Now I'm in it for the thrill of victory and the lure of a fat Paycheck. The fact that it provides a temporary bomb to my permanent psychological damage is purely a side benefit. That's good. I hate to think there was something weird going on here. I'd like to dive against you. You want to dive against me? <laughs> ah, thank you, little friend, for bringing laughter back into my life. What's so funny? Don't tell me you're serious. As serious as scurvy, diver boy. It's not wise to trifle with me, Mr. Thripwood. I am the greatest diver in the world! Second greatest, you mean. Very well. The gauntlet has been thrown. 
I suppose you have been certified by the judging committee? Certified? Do you think I am some sort of clown who accepts the challenges of every two-shilling braggart that comes my way? Um, yes? If you want to die, go to the judges' committee and get certified. I just remembered a previous engagement. Bye. So this is the last part of the ultimate insult, well not, not the baby seal oil, but the golden trophy. Bosun and Bosun's baby seal oil. I'm assuming that this oil is meant to be used on baby seals rather than... Don't touch that oil, it's very expensive. Let's see if I can do this now to save a bit of time. Hey look, over there! Here it is. Time around. It's a golden trophy of a man in a classic arms overhead diving pose. Oh, sorry. That trophy is for the winner of the all-world prank diving contest only. Excuse me. Hey, hey, little dude. What's up? What's going on around here? We are the judges for Jambaraya's all-world diving contest. Actually, it's more like a free-for-all than a contest. Dude, quit projecting your negative vibes, man. I'd like to take a crack at winning that diving trophy. You and dozens of other gold-hunting wannabes. If you wish to dive, you must be certified first. Why? We could leave ourselves open to most grievous lawsuits if we let physically uncool people try to dive. Now, if you just step behind the table... There won't be any word problems, will there? Hey, what are you doing with that? Please turn to the right, dude. You're not gonna put that there, are you? <laughs> now then. Let me know when this begins to hurt. Ouch! And another thing. I think the staple gun was completely uncalled for. Be that as it may, you have passed the physical. Really? Don't act so shocked. You'd have to be a palsy-ridden grandmother to fail. Here's your certificate. Feel free to challenge our champion diver whenever you want to dive. Right, let's go for a initial dive. Then I will work on completing this part, which looks a little bit complicated, but we'll get there. So, you've managed to get yourself certified. Ah! I've seen palsy-ridden grandmothers with better qualifying scores. So, are you challenging me to a dive-off then? What was he looking at? You better believe it. Then, prepare to be humiliated, Mr. Thripwood. Marco De Pollo is about to attempt a alpha monkey rum barrel spinning swordsman combination. Let's give him complete silence for this dive. The prank is yours, Thripwood. Come on, Guybrush. This is going to take a while. Right, I'll basically explain what's happening is that Marco del Pollo just did a combination of. What was this? That's a seagull. He did a uh, free move combination. 
and we have to copy him by using the, the direction keys. And there's four in total, which you have to figure out pretty much for yourself through trial and error, but to save a lot of time, I wrote, wrote them all down. So we had an alpha monkey, which is left. I can't remember what the other one is. Rum barrel, which is down. And the other one, which is right. I only wrote initials down. Oh. There we go. Cool. I wasn't that bad, was I? Rats. The winner and still all world prank diving champion is Marco De Pollo. So there's three judges here, and as you saw, one gave us 10 out of 10, another 5 out of, t out of 10. Hey, there's a picture of that grouchy diving judge in here, and that must be his beautiful blonde wife that he's with. So, let's uh, show this to the grouchy judge, who gave us zero. Why are you showing me this? I don't rightly know. Wait a second. Let's have to talk to him first. Pardon me. What? What was wrong with my last dive? It sucked. Could you be more specific? Nope. Why are you giving me such low scores? Look, kid, it's nothing personal. It's just that I've got an expensive red-headed wife, two expensive red-headed kids, and an expensive red-headed dog to feed, you follow? Not really. Then let me spell it out for you. Mr. Mandrill pays me a lot of money to make sure that Mr. DePoyo always wins. Whatever Mandrill's paying you to fix this contest, I'll double it. I appreciate the sentiment, Junior, but it's obvious that you don't have two shillings to rub together, much less the kind of dough it takes to keep my red-headed wife living in the manner to which she's accustomed. I think I'll leave you to your grouchiness. Whatever. Yes, so we needed to speak to him first, because apparently he's on the cover with a blonde woman. Why are you showing me this? I don't rightly know. Hmm. I'll just need to pause for two seconds. Okay, I'm doing the right thing according, according to the walkthrough. But let's speak to these guys first. Excuse me. Oh, what is a little diver, dude? What was wrong with my last dive? Not a thing, bro, Ham. It was primo! Okay, if you didn't do the combination in the right order, the hippie would tell you that you need to do exactly what Marco's doing, which I kind of did already. See you later. You got it, dude. Woo! Uh, pardon me. Yes, Grasshopper. One of your judges is taking bribes. That is an exceptionally grave charge, young Macron. Do you have any proof? He told me he was taking bribes. Is anyone here taking bribes? Nope. No way, man. If I were you, I'd refrain from making baseless accusations in the future. Well, what was wrong with my last dive? The perfect dive should leave no trace of the diver upon the water. As you seek perfection in your dives, Seek perfection in your splashes. Are you saying that my splashes are too big? Yes. You might try making your form more uh, aerodynamic, like that of a swordfish. Fish are aerodynamic? Aloha. May your life be big and your splashes be small. Okay. Walkthrough set to show this to the grouchy judge. Let's try with the wise old judge. It would be most unwise to try to bribe a diving judge. Why are you showing me this? I don't... Okay. Hey, 
There's a picture of that grouchy diving judge in here, but that blonde he's with is definitely not his lovely red-headed wife. Okay, I'm doing things completely ass about tip right now, but we'll get in there. Watch this. It's a brochure for Stan's Jambalaya Timeshare Emporium. Yeah? So? Take a look at page three. Yikes! I think your red-headed wife would be very interested to find out about the time you've been sharing with this blonde, don't you? You got it all wrong, kid. She's just a friend of the family. Really? Really? Huh. Well, then I guess your wife won't mind if I show her the brochure. Wait! Stop! What do you want? What's it worth to you? I've got money, jewels, property, anything. Just don't tell my wife. Fine. All I want is a fair diving competition. That's all. Really? Really. Do we have a deal? Deal. It won't do you any good, though. DePoyo's too good to be beaten by a flat-headed loser like you. Right. It's now time for attempt number two. So we've just sealed up. It's that new chunky style lox flavored baby sea oil I've heard so much about. Yeah, we've bunged up his bottle. Now we need to make ourselves more aerodynamic with the dunce cap. And I think that's it. I'm back! So I see. What can I do for you, Mr. Thripwood? I'm ready to dive against you now. Then, prepare to be humiliated, Mr. Thripwood. Marco de Pollo is about to attempt a keel hall, spinning swordsman, alpha monkey combination. Let's give him complete silence for this dive. His doors, Thripwood. Oh, that's a relief. He went straight up there. So yes, keel hole is up. The sword thingy is right, and the elf monkey is left. Let's go for it. to see that good old-fashioned blackmail still works in some parts of this modern world. Looking good. Whoa, dudes, this is unprecedented. The newcomer has tied Marco de Pollo. What happens now? We move on to the tiebreaker round. Scissors, rock, paper? You wish. In this round of dives, you will go first, and de Pollo will try to match your dive. You have shown that you can mimic my moves, Mr. Threepwood. But I doubt that you can concoct a dive that I cannot perform. We'll just see about that dive, monkey. Very well. The plank is yours. Okay, it doesn't matter what combination we actually do. Just do any. So, I'm sure we'll see what happens because we wad wadded up his oil. But this will be the last part, well, my last actions in this part of the, this, in part two. So, I will say now, thank you for watching. I'll see you again for part three. I guess the dunce cap worked. Nice dive, Mr. Threepwood. If you'll excuse me for a moment. What Marco doesn't know is that we've replaced his regular baby seal oil with Starbuckineer Schmearwiz. Let's watch. Now, my friend, prepare to watch a master in action. Now, Marco de Pollo will attempt to beat Die Brush Threepwood's dive. Let's give him complete silence for this time. Ah! Shoot! Go away! Ah! 
Ladies and gentlemen, the new all-world plank diving champion is... Uh... I brush threepwood! I protest! That was not a fair dive! I want a rematch right now! I am Marco de Pollo, the greatest plank diver in the world! Marco... Polo! Who said that? Marco... Polo! Stop it! I will not be mocked! Marco! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Polo! Gee, I wonder how Elaine's doing. Hey, thanks for coming out to vote. Remember, a vote for me is a vote against Demon Spawn Hell Pirates. Thanks for your support, citizen. Good times and free grog are just around the corner. Don't vote for Charles. He's really LeChuck, the demon zombie ghost pirate from hell. Oh, give it up, Mrs. Threepwood. Everybody knows that LeChuck is dead and that your husband killed him. You'll have to excuse her, Mr. Charles. Think nothing of it, my good man. Ah, ah, there! There, you see? Charles is a chuck! Look! Well, that should just about wrap things up. I think I'll go pack my bags and get ready to move into the governor's mansion. <laughs> Mr. Cheese. Aye, Captain. Raise the anchor, hoist the sails, and ready the warp drive. Aye, Captain. Otis! What? Go find Carla and sober her up. Oh, yeah, that'll be easy. Now that the pieces of the ultimate insult are mine, it's back to Melee Island. Buddy, I'm home! <laughs> LeChuck! That's Governor LeChuck to you, see good? No way! Yes way. Ozzy, I had a feeling you were working for LeChuck. I'm afraid you got it backwards, pirate boy. LeChuck's working for me. Well, that makes me feel better. Governor LeChuck, would you be kind enough to relieve Mr. Threepwood of the pieces to the ultimate insult? Ah, it'd be a pleasure, Mr. Mandrill. Don't do it, LeChuck. He wants to use the ultimate insult to humiliate every pirate on the face of the Earth. And? <laughs> you know? Oh, of course he knows, you sloth-brained pile of kookaburra droppings. B why, LeChuck? Why would a swashbuckling, albeit demonically evil, pirate like yourself willingly aid in the mass emasculation of your fellow buccaneers? Well, that's a long story, she good. Oh, no. But it basically boils down to two reasons. First of all, this mandrill scallywag pulled me out from under that mountain of ice that you left me under. And LeChuck always repays his debts. Fine, you owe the guy, but why go along with this plan to irreversibly insult all the pirates? Because, you seafaring scumweasel, when we succeed in breaking the fighting spirit of all the pirates, LeChuck will finally have the one thing he's always wanted in life. Or death, as the case may be. You don't mean... Yes, Elaine Marley's hand in marriage. Um, excuse me, see the ring on this finger? You're a little late, bucko. Well, I think I can fix that. LeChuck, no! We may need him as a hostage. Uh, yeah, <laughs> a hostage. Besides, even if you kill me, Elaine still never marry you. She hates your stinking undead guts. Ah, but that's the beauty of the ultimate insult, Threepwood. Once your wife has been exposed to its hideous, demoralizing power, her fiery pirate spirit will be shattered like so many emu eggs, leaving her compliant, submissive, and obedient. <laughs> In other words, the perfect wife! <laughs> Speaking of perfect wives, where is Elaine? We were hoping you could answer that question, Mr. Threepwood. Your mischievous Sheila went walkabout right after Captain LeChuck was elected governor of this pirate-infested backwater of an island. Good for her. I hope she comes back with an army of pirates and kicks your sorry butts. Are you sure I can't kill him yet? 
I've left him alive before, and it's always turned out to be a big mistake. I see your point. How about we stow the twerp in an inescapable faraway place where he can't do any harm? Then he'll still be a useful hostage, but he won't be able to affect our plans. Ha <laughs> ha! That's a hellishly good idea! And I know just the place! <laughs> Mwahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahah